Our lesson for July 16th, 2017, Lesson 7, and it's taken from Unit 2, which is titled, Calling of Prophets. Our lesson title for this week is, You Can Do It. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 75, and our background scripture is Jeremiah chapter 1. And our print passage is also Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. And our key verse, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 1, 8. And our lesson aim as a result of experience this lesson, that the students should be able to Recall the story of Jeremiah's call and recount the details of the promises that God made to Jeremiah. Since the intensity of Jeremiah's call and his emotional reaction to it, and to respond to a call from God despite feelings of personal inadequacy, you can do it. In our lesson, we have the history of the prophet Jeremiah called to his office as one of God's prophets. Finally, with a satisfying assurance to himself that it, it was the word of the Lord and not just a delusion that Jeremiah now states and, and tells us about his call. He said... He says in verse 4 and 5 of our lesson, he says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee, and before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah states that this is not his own words, but he is letting it be known that, that these are the words of God that was brought to him. He says, then the word of the Lord came to me. That before he was born, God in his eternal counsel had designed him to be a prophet and to let him know that he who gave him his commission is the same one that gave him his being, that the same one that gave him life, that formed in the belly of his mother and brought him forth out of the womb, and, and that God had sanctified him, that is, to set him apart for God's use and purpose for the office of prophets to nations, not to the Jews only, but also to the neighboring nations that God had called Jeremiah to be a prophet, and that God had, had, had determined this before Jeremiah was even conceived, that God had set him apart to do his work, and that God had called him for this special office of a prophet to n not only tell his own people, thus said the Lord, but to warn those neighboring nations around them. And so we find in, 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 in verse 6 and 7 of our lesson, lesson where it states, Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Jeremiah said that, O Lord, behold, I am a child, and I cannot speak. For I am a, I am mature and I cannot 
speak, to do the things that you would have me to do. So we see how that Jeremiah objects to the call. And, and as a work, he states that he is unqualified, saying that I cannot speak. In other words, he's saying that I do not have the ability to speak to great men and multitude as a prophet must be able to do. He's saying I cannot finally or fluently and I cannot find word things. I cannot put things to, together well as a messenger from God should be able to do. So many times that people, we become fearful, we become intimidated. Looking at other people that we feel that are so elderly, that they are so, they have the gift of gab and, and, and how that, with how they just ooze confidence and, and what we think is, is, is power. And so by us looking at them, we we are fearful that that we cannot do the things that that they do. But don't you know if God calls us to do something, He is calling us to do His will, and He is equipping us to do those things. So so we are not to be fearful or afraid, but we are to trust in. In the Lord. So Jeremiah was saying that I cannot speak with any authority, nor expect to be heeded, for I am a child. Not is that that he was a little infant or anything like that, but but that he was young. He was a young man. He was young in age, and he said that by him being so young, that the older people, those who in authority, would despise him. So we find God tells him in verses 7 and 8 of our lesson, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. But the Lord said, Unto me, God tells him not to let he, him being young hinder him, but he is to go to all whom God would send him to, and he is to speak whatever God has commanded him, and that is needed today. That not not what man feels or what or want to hear, and not what these so-called spokesmen for God today think or feel that should be heard. But they, we should preach the word of God, what God says, not, not what we think, not how we feel, but God has commanded us in his word, through his spirit, that we should preach his word. First, Second Timothy Chapter 4, verses 2 through 5 states, it says, Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myth. But keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. And that just like Jeremiah was commissioned and commanded to give out God's word. So the man of God today, it is his responsibility to give out the word of God. Now we have to understand that Jeremiah was 
was living in a time where his message would be very unfavorable. And, and, and the hearers of his message, his own people, they would not want to hear his message. Because his message wasn't a message about prosperity. And it wasn't a message about the goodness and the, and, 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 and the mercy and the blessings of God. His message was about that God's judgment was about to come on his people and those around him because of their sins. And that God being a holy God and that regardless of who you were or what nation that you were, that God was going to judge the people, the nations for their sins. And that God was using as a rod of his chastisement the nation of Babylon. And he was using the king of Babylon as his instruments to bring his wrath for sin upon those nations. And so that Jeremiah's message was to them is that go ahead on and submit to the nation of Nebuchadnezzar. Go, don't resist. Don't fight against him. But just go on and surrender yourself because this is the will of God and that this is the will of God and that this will not be changed regardless of what all these false prophets are telling you that God's judgment is come upon the nation Israel the Judah because of their sin now we have to understand that a hundred years before that they had seen the, the ten northern tribes, which was the northern kingdom, go into captivity by the Assyrians for the same very sins, idolatry, for them turning away from God, from them turning towards idols, for them just being disobedient to the word of God and the things that God had commanded them to do. And that God brought his wrath upon Israel, the ten northern tribe. And so now his wrath is coming upon Judah, the, the two southern tribes. And, and to let them know that they might as well go on and submit. To submit to the will of God. You know, we always... Today, we're always talking about God's blessings and, 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 and prosperity and God's forgiveness. But, you know, we need to send out the message about the, just how holy God is and how that much that God despises and hates sin. And how that God will judge whoever you may be regardless of nationality or your person, that God judges and he will not tolerate sin. That is the message that we need to give, that, that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And that, and that God will judge sin. Now, if we want to look at how God really feels about sin. Only thing we need to look at is to crucify Jesus Christ. For he was not crucified by the Jews or the Romans, but he was smitten of God. That he was wounded for the world's transgression, and that he was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement, the punishment for our peace was upon him. And please God to bruise him, to make his soul an offering for sin. So now, this is the unfavorable message that Jeremiah was to bring to a nation that supposed to have been God's people. To a nation that that had the temple of God in their presence. To a nation that was 
offering sacrifices and, and celebrating the festivals of God, but but that was also going off into the high places, offering incense and, 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 and worshiping idols, and that God, and that God was going to bring his judgment on them. So Jeremiah was to bring an unpleasant message, a message that 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 caused his own relatives from his from his hometown to despise him and to plot against him to kill him. But but Jeremiah, this was his duty. This was his duty that was ordained to God, and this is what regardless what he had to do. And so God tells him and encourages. He said, and God tells him, don't be afraid of their faces. We have to realize that those that have messages to deliver from God must not be afraid of the faces of man, of mankind. Though he shall meet with many enemies and much oppositions, God will be his protection. Don't you know that God goes along with those whom he sends and, and it it is by his powerful protection that at all times in all places that God is present with them. Even we today as Christians, we, we have to understand that uh, uh, the Lord said that in this world that you should have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And he also tells us that, what, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, and that and that he would be with us even until the ends of the earth. So so we should not have no fear ourselves as for standing up and telling the truth. Instead of being being cowards and, and, and back down and and water down God's message, not to offend nobody. To water down and, and alter God's message so that we would be liked by mankind or those that we speak to. Now, which one, which one should we obey? Should we obey man or should we obey God? Should we fear man or should we fear God? So this is something that we need to think about. And then this is not only for the so-called prophets or preachers of God, but, but, but this is for all the saints of God. For we all are called to be his witness. It is not just the, the preacher or the prophet, God, but we are every Christian. We are called to be a witness to Jesus Christ. And that we are called to do what? That we are to bear fruit. And that bearing fruit is pleasing unto the Lord. The Lord talks about bearing fruit in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. How that he is divine and we are the branches. And that we should abide in him and he abide in us. And, and, and that we must do what? Bring forth fruit. Things that are pleasing to God. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, meekness. Temperance, you know, these are the things that God wants us to bring forth. And then by us bringing forth, showing forth those products of the Holy Spirit, that, that we would be a witness unto the Lord. Now, everyone is not to stand up and give a, a sermon or, or, or they are great uh, uh, auditors where, where, where they can speak and with smooth tongues. And, and but, but we all can live a life. We all can let our, our light shine. We all can be ready to answer when somebody asks us about the hope that is in us. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do it. And so we find in verse 9 of our lesson where it states, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. The Lord, behold, the Lord said, Behold, I have put 
my words. Jeremiah cannot use the excuse that he cannot speak. For God will enable him to speak intelligently and as one that knows God with, a, with authority. Not only put knowledge into his heart, in his head, but, but God's words, very words in his mouth. God's message, God's message should be delivered in his own words, the word that God chooses, that it may be delivered accurately so that it will have the power that it needs to go forth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 states, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. We need to speak the word of God to our listeners. That where we can find the word of God. Well, how do God speak to us these days? He speaks to us in his word. Not all these uh, 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 self help help tapes and and, and 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 all these old books that's uh, uh, that's always on sale that some man that was the author get your information get your strength get your get your road map get your compass get that from the word of god it is right there for us it it is a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so now, this is what we need to speak. This is what we need to teach. Not some philosophy, but we need to teach the word of God. His word and not our word. And so we see in uh, verse 10 of it, our lesson, it says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. I have set thee over the nations and over kingdoms. Though Jeremiah was a poor, despicable priest, that the people despised. In, in their sight, that's what he was. In the, in the sight of his countrymen, he was a poor, despicable priest. But God now has set him over the nations, and God has set him o over nations and kingdoms. Okay? He is not, he was not set over the nation as a prince to rule them by the sword, but as a prophet by the power of the word of God. Jeremiah was set over the nations, the Jewish nations and the surrounding ones in that area. He was set over them, not to demand tribute or taxes from them, nor to enrich his, himself with wealth from them, but he was to root out, to pull down, destroy, and yet to build up and plant. In other words, he was set over them to tell them that it would be well or ill with them according as they were or were not reformed. That he was to set before them Life and death, good and evil. He must assure them. He must assure those who persisted in their wickedness and evil ways that they would be rooted out and destroyed. And also, those who repented and heeded God's word that they would be built and planted, built and planted like a tree that was 
or, 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 or new crop planted to grow and to prosper. We find written in Jeremiah chapter 27 verses 8 through 11 it states where, where it says that if however any nation or kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow his neck under his yoke. This is God speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. He said, I will punish that nation with the sword. Phantom and plagues declare the Lord until I destroy it by his hands. So do not listen. To your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your medias, your sorcerers who tell you you will not serve the king of Babylon. They prophesize lies to you that will only serve to remove you far from your land. I will banish you and you will perish. But if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let that nation remain in its own land to till it and to live there, declares the Lord. So Jeremiah had a message that was very unfavorable. That that judgment was coming and that God wanted those to understand to to go ahead on and submit until his chastisement and then when the, when the time was up that God will because of their obedience and their repentance that he would bring them back into the land and, and that they would prosper. So though it was a hard unpleasant message and that his people despise him for bringing them the truth. They abused him. They, they, they tried to take his life but God was with him and so God protected him. So now we today the message that we have should be about the truth. Because we are his workmanship created unto, unto good works in Christ Jesus that God has ordained that we should walk in them. So now we should be a light. We should witness to the word of God. Not to the things that pleases man. And we shouldn't change the word of God to appease man or to be liked by man. But we are to stand on the word of God. And not be afraid. Because God said. That he will be with us. So knowing this. We can do it. God bless you. And keep you.